Okay, so we are going to get started. So good evening again, and welcome to Congrats from the College Hill session. Uh, my name is Peaches Valdez, and I'm the Dean of Admission here at Hamilton. It is my absolute pleasure to congratulate you all on your admission to Hamilton's class of 2025, which was the largest and most selective in the college's history. I know that this has been a year full of twists, twists and turns, but you've stayed the course and shown such inspiring resilience and adaptability in a world that seems to be constantly changing. So my hope is that over the coming weeks, you'll take advantage of the offerings with that to connect with us, to learn more about Hamilton and what makes us a distinct community. And with that in mind, um, it is my absolute honor to share this space, um, this virtual space, with Katie, Christian, Safa, and James, who are all mm -hmm. members of the class of 2021. Um, and they are actually on location on campus. So during your introductions, y'all, can you please just tell us where you're, you're Zooming from? That would be great. Mm -hmm. um, so what they're gonna do is as they talk about getting closer to, their, uh, to the end of their time here on the Hill, they're gonna talk about their Hamilton experience, um, but they're also gonna talk about how the college has prepared them for that next step, that next journey in their lives. And of course, where they're going to answer the questions that you all submitted uh, during um, your registration. We'll try to get as many as possible answered, but then also my colleagues are also in the chat as well, who will also be answering questions too. So make sure we'll try to answer as many as we can. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass the virtual mic uh, to Katie, who's going to be your MC for this evening. Um, so I hope you enjoy this session. Thank you so much for joining us and congratulations and welcome to Hamilton. Thank you, Peaches, for that introduction and welcome everyone. A special congrats to the admitted students as well. Um, so hi, my name is Katie Gagnon. I am a senior admissions fellow here at Hamilton and I'm actually joining you from the admissions office. Um, so on campus, I am a double major studying government and economics, and some of my main extracurriculars on campus are dance team and Greek life. Um, Safa, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. Yeah, hi guys. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, so yeah, hi, I'm Safa, also Penn senior. Um, I'm an art major and I have minors in biology and chemistry because I'm on the pre-dental track. I am joining you guys from KJ today, uh, which is usually a really popular study spot on campus, but since it's so nice outside today, I was lucky enough to get a spot here. Um, and yeah, um, on campus, I, um, yeah, I'm a senior admission fellow. I work at the Welland Museum. I'm um, president of On The Move, which is Hamilton's Refugee Solidarity Club. So that's just a little bit about me. Yeah, um, awesome, I'm sorry. James, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. Absolutely. Oh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is James. I'm also a senior here at Hamilton. You guys are absolutely taking me back right now to when I got accepted back in 2017 and was like in the group me and talking to everyone just so excited. So like, thank you for that. I'm like genuinely so happy right now. Um, yeah. And then in terms of stuff I do on campus. So um, I am uh, a German studies major, which is kind of exciting. I got to travel abroad last year, which was really, really awesome. Um, I also write for a bunch of publications. So a member of the Dual Observer, Daily Bull, and I'm actually in the process of starting another publication on campus, which I'm so excited about. Um, and then, yeah, that's me in a nutshell. I live in Babbitt on the dark side. And as such, I decided to come and get Opus One uh, for my spot to Zoom with you all from here. Again, it's usually a little bit busier, but I'm uh, everyone's outside and enjoying the warm weather. So this is probably my top spot to study on campus because it's got really nice chairs and good coffee. And yeah, that's me. Awesome. Christian? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Well. My name is Christian. Uh, I am a senior, like every, like my fellow panelists here. Uh, I am a junior. Uh, I have a minor in Asian studies and Japanese to be specific. Uh, I had the lovely opportunity to get accepted into a program to go to Kyoto uh, in my spring semester of junior year. Unfortunately, um, the pandemic did not necessarily go uh, as well with my plans to go abroad, but I had the chance to do it virtually, which is super beautiful and amazing. Um, what I currently do on campus. Uh, so what I currently do on campus, aside from admissions, I'm also a part of the OCC, where the Oral Communications Center, which is a place where students can learn how to, you know, work on their speeches and work on public speaking, which is always big fun. Um, and then aside from that, I am also a member of QSU, where I have served as president before, and I am also part of La Vanguardia, which is a Latinx group here in Hamilton, which is super, super fun. Uh, and I believe that's all I do. Um, so yeah. Yeah, awesome. Oh, and where I am. Ooh. 
Katie, I did not even introduce my room. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, I, I am representing the dorms. Uh, you are currently looking at EO's dorm, which is on, currently on light side, which is right next to the Science Center, where you would frequently find me studying sand samples, which is big fun. Uh, I'm studying little microfossils. Anyway, sorry, Katie, you're up. <laughs> That's awesome. That sounds like really cool. Yeah, so thank you everyone for submitting questions. We're going to go through a bunch of them tonight. But if you didn't get a chance to submit, please feel free to put them in the Q&A. Um, as mentioned before, there are admissions officers in the chat answering some questions too. Um, but we're gonna kind of take the lead on some of the questions already submitted. Um, so starting with some academics questions. So um, James, how did you approach the open curriculum and how did you think about picking your classes? Yeah, great question, Katie. No, uh, so yeah, I, Let's see, when I first came to Hamilton, um, I had taken physics my senior year of high school. And I was like, oh, physics, that's easy. Let me do that. And then I tried doing it at Hamilton. And then I realized that I was not that great at physics. So it was really cool, though, because I was able to take physics class my first semester. I was in a physics 190 and then a calc 110 class. And I was just surrounded by people who were really, really excited and like doing problem sets in the boards and like loving it. And I just kind of wasn't having that same connection that some of my peers were having. But I noticed that in the women's and gender studies class I was taking in the German studies class. I felt the same way. Like I was just excited to talk to people about it. I was really looking forward to class. I wanted to sit and like have huge arguments about whether or not getting a, um, a nose piercing is body mutilation and like things like that. Um, so I kept, I decided to switch things up, keep going that route. Um, and yeah, ended up taking uh, more gender studies classes, philosophy classes, German studies classes, and that's kind of how I ended up here. So I think really the best part about the open curriculum is for one thing, you get to actually take what you want as I did, but even more than that, you just get people who are so excited to talk about similar things. And that was like so, so new for me and I absolutely loved it. Yeah, awesome. That has definitely been my experience too. I think the open curriculum was great at letting me take a wide variety of classes especially during my first and second years here at Hamilton before kind of choosing to narrow in on what I, you know, truly found were my academic passions. So that's awesome to hear. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, and Christian, I know you briefly mentioned, but would you mind talking a bit about research here at Hamilton? Yeah. So, uh, Research, so I, I'm a STEM major, I'm in the geoscience department, so I can talk about the, at least the STEM portion of research. I know that there's, there's also some research available uh, in the humanities, but in terms of STEM, I know that it's a really great opportunity to be able to work with your professors. I know personally for myself in the geoscience department, there are five professors total, uh, and currently in my senior class, there are only 10 of us in the major total. So it's a really mm -hmm. small group of us, which makes it really easy for us to be able to do research. I know that I've had the lovely opportunity my junior year I, my professor had found a mineral up in the Adirondacks since we're here on, on mountains, literally, which is super cool. Um, he found this mineral composition that he wanted to investigate. And literally in class, he was just like, everyone, like I have this new mineral, like it's gonna require some chemical analysis some chemistry. Would anyone like to stay in the summer and go over, you know, use some cool tech to go figure things out. And I was like, cool beans, I'll sign up. Um, <laughs> signed up, I was super excited for it. Um, unfortunately with COVID, we did not have the opportunity to actually Put that plan in place um but i know that research opportunities um in hamilton are always accessible to me even as a senior despite me not necessarily formally signing up to do research um, my current senior thesis project is actually studying sands from africa and so i'm currently running through uh over 53 different samples which is going to create 53 new jobs for students on campus because they're actually going to use those for like future summer work and do research here as well so a lot to do in summer research the realm is huge really <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Would anyone want to touch a bit about humanities research? If not, I can talk a little. I personally didn't do research myself. Um, however, research is available and research opportunities are available in every department at Hamilton, you know, via connecting with a professor, uh, most often during the summer. And I've had lots of friends that have stayed to work on projects in you know, literature, government, and so many other different majors. So it's a really cool opportunity. And people say staying a summer in Hamilton is something that you should try to do before you graduate. Um, unfortunately, I was not able to do that, but I think it would have been a really cool experience. And I've heard great things for everyone who has. Hmm. Awesome. Um, so Safa, how would you kind of describe the student body in terms of, are we more competitive, more collaborative? Kind of what's that academic feel? Yeah, I would definitely say that we are all about the collaboration here. I mean, in like all of my classes, I was really nervous coming into college about that just because, you know, like 
I've had heard rumors about like STEM classes and just like, you know, people in STEM in general just being kind of like more competitive. But here it was just like a totally different vibe. Like I remember like going into classes, like meeting new people and like, you know, things like forming like group meets and for classes will happen and you will like organize study sessions together. And uh, it's it just really nice because, you know, uh, you know, things happen and like, you know, if you miss a class or something like that, like everyone is able to ask like each other for notes like you know there's just like this general understanding that people will help each other and like try to bring each other up instead of like being like you know like withholding any resources from each other or anything like that so yeah I would definitely say we um excel with the collaboration yeah great yeah I would definitely agree um anyone else want to touch on that one yeah, absolutely. Just, I mean, I just want to completely agree with Safa. I mean, even in terms of like more of the humanities, which is what I've done, um, I can just, it's really nice being at a school that's just got a lot of resources and one on resources, I mean money because Hamilton has a lot of money and also just resources and like people here who like want to see you doing cool things. Um, I did uh, the Shep internship program my um, sophomore year, my sophomore summer. Um, so before moving all the way to Germany, I moved to Austin, Texas and worked at a women's center. Um, and I remember going through the application process, process through the Levitt Center and just telling all my friends about it and like wanting my friends, other people who were interested said nonprofits to be doing it. And that's the way I had found out about it was from another friend who's applying, even though this is a program that only takes like 10 students from Hamilton every year. And the reason we're talking about it and like telling one another is because like, if my friend Christine gets that job and I don't, I'm gonna find something else that's really cool. You know what I mean? And like, it genuinely does grant me a lot of happiness to see her get that opportunity and also have the security to know I can go talk to Heather Wixon in the Career Center, who's my advisor and has been my advisor for four years and find something else, you know? So that's like just amazing. And it's such a big shift from my high school experience personally. And that's like really nice. Yeah, you mentioned the Levitt Center. Would you briefly just um, explain what that is to people joining us? Absolutely. And if you don't, if you come to Hamilton and you don't know what the Levitt Center is, that's okay, because most of us learn as we go. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit more vague of a department. Not, It's not vague. It deals with um, a lot of issues related to public service, essentially. So the Levitt Center does um, basically programming for students who are interested in going into sort of governmental work, education work, things like that. Um, they also provide funding for students. So if you're interested in doing research projects, like a ton of us did last semester, um, you're able to get funding for that through them, which is really, really cool. And then they also have like speaker series and like bring in um, really, really cool people, whether or not that's professors at the school who are typically already experts in the field or people from off campus in a non-COVID world. Um, yeah, Levitt Center is really cool. Also, it's just a nice place to study because usually the conference rooms are free and you can just go get a room, which is nice, but yeah, that's I've it. I've definitely enjoyed listening to talks presented by Levitt Center, especially. Hmm. Cool, awesome. Um, so anyone can jump in on this, but how is ho first year housing decided and what has your experience been like with housing overall, especially as we are a 100% residential campus? Uh, I can start. Um, in terms of how first year housing is decided, at least the way I remember, we filled out a survey and we also had a preferences for the type of dorms we want where like they listed all the first year dorms because first years are the only dorms that actually have like um, specific housing, which is really cool. Um, I know that we uh, all offer like at least double housing. The other options are triples and quads, which would be like cells, for example, which have quads as an options. Um, in terms of like uh, what my experience was like, I honestly loved my roommate. Um, I had, I lived in Wartimer, which is down the hill. It is on Grayside, which is super cool. Um, my roommate name was Nick. He was somebody from California and I learned so much about golf um, which was just so much fun. Like I thought that the opportunity to have um, an ability to make a friend really, cause that's what like the roommate, like the roommates ask you questions that allow you to kind of connect with one another and not just a personal sense, but also like on a study base set and kind of working together. And I at least found my roommate to be a true ball. Even as a senior, I have weekly dinners with him on Wednesdays where we catch up on like how things are. Um, and actually, since we just recently went cold green and golf is on one of the spring sports, he's actually talking to me about, you know, starting to pick up golf again, which is super exciting. Um, 
so yeah, honestly, my experience with my first year housing was just lovely. I think it allowed me to branch out, not just from something that I felt a little more comfortable with, like theater, but going to something like golf, which <laughs> was like completely left field for me um, and just something truly amazing and wonderful. Um, so yeah, my first year uh, housing experience was lovely. <laughs> Nice. Is that Nick Randolph? <laughs> uh, no, it's Nick Schneiser. Actually, Nick Randolph lived on the same floor. He was three doors <laughs> down. Um, from the, yeah, it was one. It Love was that. a really surreal experience. Amazing. <laughs> also, Safa, would you also want to hop in on kind of your housing experience, maybe more generally at Hamilton? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I would definitely echo uh, what Christian said about like freshman year. I was also very like um, my freshman year roommate and I saw on the questionnaire you answer a lot of questions about like your sleeping patterns, whether you're a night owl or like an early riser, like just uh, whether you're like more like quiet spaces when you study or you like or you're fine with noise, just like things like that. Um, so both my roommate and I, it was really interesting because like I'm a night owl and I like love naps and like my freshman year roommate was also kind of the same way. So we just like really like vibed and like we're able to match mm -hmm. each other's like schedules really well because we would do the same thing where we would like you know have our classes during the day we would just nap and we would just stay up late at night doing our work so um, I would definitely like agree that it was a really great experience and also just like throughout the four years it's really nice just because like light side and dark side can be like really different um, in terms of like the architecture so it's like I've uh, been like lucky enough to live on both sides so like last year was my first year um, living on the light side in the like Carnegie and it was just like it's just such a like because the architecture is different it's just like you get to see like new spaces from your window and it's just like a fun thing to look forward to every year um in the lottery and like decide who you're going to live with and like if you want to like live with like if you want a single or if you want to live with more people like I lived in a quad uh, for the first time last year and that was a really great experience so I would say it's just like a really exciting like thing to look forward to um as you like progress through your journey at Hamilton. Yeah, absolutely. My freshman year roommate and I had so much in common too, um, both on paper and also in reality. So it worked out super mm -hmm. well. Um, we actually ended up living together again sophomore year. And since I've just had a really great experience with our housing, it's really nice mm -hmm. now I have like a kitchen and did last year too. So even though we are 100% residential, you're still able to, you know, cook meals for yourself and kind of have those sweet dinners and have a single if you want and things like that too. So I've really enjoyed living all on campus. Plus everyone's really easy to meet up with and grab dinner with. So it's great. Awesome. Um, so James, we're getting a lot of questions kind of about, um, you know, self-guided tours. Um, so first just want to give a reminder to everyone that we're offering a limited number of self-guided tours. Um, so to register, please go to hamilton.edu backslash explore. Um, but beyond buildings, because we can't go inside those, um, what do you think are the spots that people should be sure not to miss on their self-guided tours? Oh, well, there's just too many. Um, no, but in terms <laughs> of, I'm trying to think of, <laughs> I don't know what, I'm trying to be don't coy. Step no. on the seal. Sorry. Oh yeah, don't step on the seal. That's true. That's a place not to visit is the this <laughs> Hamilton College seal. Um, but let me think. Okay, so I'm gonna try and be edgy and cool and tell you about the cool spaces to visit because that that the other tour guides won't. Uh, no, but what number one spot is there's a cemetery on campus which you should be very respectful of. Don't go in and be blasting noise and doing all sorts of rude things because it is a cemetery. Um, but it's also a very spooky cemetery and that's kind of very cool. Like it's a cool way to kind of. I don't know, acknowledge like the history of the college. Cause again, this college was founded and like, you know, established in 1793, chartered 1812. So it's old, like there's got, it's got some history to it. And I think that's a really, really cool physical way to kind of explore that and like see what you're surrounded by and kind of like what you're becoming a part of. Um, I only have two, but my other one is just the glens. I mean, I think I saw a question earlier, like how do you connect with nature, things like that. The glens are my favorite part of this campus by far. I mean, we are a small, like smaller campus, but We've got so many acres of land just out in the forests and they vary by how much they're maintained. So you can go to like, I think it's the Kirkland Glen that's got all the nice shale pathways and you take your parents through and it's very pretty and picturesque and, you know, get all those, get all those photos for Instagram. Um, and then you've got like the Root Glen, which is like just trails and like bike paths and things like that. And that's like one of my favorites to go in and just walk around on. So it depends on how much of a hiker you are, how much you know, what shoes you want to be wearing to campus that day when you visit. Um, but I do really recommend uh, checking out some of the forests around campus that Hamilton owns because it's absolutely majestic and I love it. 
Yeah, I love spending my free time in the glens going mm. in the winter, like snowshoeing and things, but right. no, yeah, yeah. Like, super fun. Um, yeah, Christian, do you have any kind of, you know, can't miss spots on campus? Ooh, oh, that's a fun one. I think oh, that there's a couple of good options. I think for the outside, a place that I think is kind of undermined. I know that there's the, the, the uh, I think it's called the, do we call it the pavilion, right? Which is on dark side where like people play sports. Yeah. Oh yeah, Bapav, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Probably Bapav. Yeah. Bapav I think is so beautiful just because I think uh, it's, it, for people who are not hikers, I am not a hiker. I like nice shoes and I like dressing <laughs> up. Uh, and so like the hiking path, honestly, Cheers. sometimes can get a little too muddy for me sometimes. And so I mm -hmm. like the back path because I think it's a really great place to go and relax. I also like um, on a traditional year, I also think it is where a lot of students kind of go and frequent to kind of like lounge around a little bit more. And so I think for kind of like that more homey feel, more Hamilton-y community feel, I really like that place in particular because it feels it feels much more serene, I would say, than like, I, I feel most serene at that place because everyone I think is kind of like vibing to their best selves, um, which mm -hmm. I think is just truly amazing. Yeah. yeah, I feel like walking around campus is just kind of a great kind of view and you kind of see how the architecture changes as you kind of cross the street. Um, definitely lots of cool spaces, but to be able to see those indoor locations, we highly recommend the guided virtual tours as well as tours mm -hmm. from your sofa, which are available to register for on the website as well. Um, so you don't want to miss that. Um, awesome. Yeah. Um, so now kind of jump to something a little bit. Oh yeah. So someone had asked um, in the chat, um, Safa, can you define dark and light side? Oh, big task. Yeah. Oh yeah. I always forget like <laughs> that <laughs> something that everyone knows. Um, so we have like a big like road in the middle called College Hill Road. Um, and that's kind of the one road dividing light side and dark side. So and it goes back to like Hamilton's history. Uh, so Hamilton used to be an all boys college. And uh, um, next to it, Kirkland College opened up, which was an all women's college. And I don't remember the year, but one year they decided to like merge and become a co-ed college. Um, and so dark side, uh, which is on one side of College Hill Road, used to be Kirkland College. And then um, light side used to be just like the all male like Hamilton College so that's kind of where it like comes from and that's why like the architecture is also different I would describe the architecture at like dark side to be kind of more like modern more blocky especially like the art center the new art center that we have mm -hmm. um, it's also just like really modern and the light side has more of that like traditional like gothic architecture so it's just like it's really like nice to just have that variety but it's also like cohesive in a way too so it's it's really interesting how the campus is laid out yeah it's really cool you can kind of see how the architecture changes um and definitely different vibes and on both sides of campus but they are still kind of pretty cohesive cool um so totally different question um i don't care who jumps in so whoever feels most passionately honestly i can start um but someone asked if we can talk a bit about the food on campus and specifically mention diner so mm -hmm. I know for me, the college search process food was super important to me. I've been a vegetarian for forever, had to make sure I was going to be able to eat foods that I, you know, liked and also that kind of went along with, you know, my diet. And honestly, it was something really important to me and that I really did find at Hamilton. Even though, um, you know, all of our dining options are on campus, there's two main dining halls, plus we have diner. Um, as well as some cafes. And I think with all of that, there are so many options on campus. Um, and I've kind of greatly enjoyed eating here. Um, mm. Specifically with diner, um, there's nothing better than, well, pre-COVID times, um, late night diner B, where you could get breakfast food on weekend nights. Um, but honestly, the food in general, I think is really good. If anyone else feels passionately about this issue. <laughs> um, you could still get breakfast at diner just from 9 to 10 a.m. every single day just mm -hmm. put that out there and the, like I would recommend the clean green sandwich thing mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. it's, yeah it, it's so good <laughs> you guys don't go for the the acai bowl what no. I've had that oh. but it's not a true no. like it's like I don't know it's Dang. I mean some days it can be very filling so it depends. guys don't trust their food takes at all this is <laughs> they're, yeah. clearly, they're clearly not of right mind no I'm kidding <laughs> hmm. oh. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So that's a little bit about food. Definitely a very important issue, uh, but also important. How is the work-life balance at Hamilton? James, did you want to go first? 
Yeah, absolutely. I'm also amazed that I pronounced Asi. I used to say Akai Bowl throughout most of oh my, my life. God. And then it was one thing Hamilton taught me, how to say that word. Um, what was the question? <laughs> um, how would you describe work-life balance at Hamilton? Absolutely, absolutely. I'm on it. Um, work, work-life work balance um, is honestly, it's something that's changed for me semester to semester, which I think is really like one of the best parts, honestly. Like, uh, so like I said, I came in thinking I was going to do physics and then I kind of shifted more towards humanities, like women's studies. I did government for a bit and then ended up um, again with, with German studies. Um, and I think the cool thing is that throughout that time, I've had to um, sort of shift my priorities based on the kind of needs of the semester academically, right? Because at the end of the day, I came into Hamilton because I wanted to learn, right? And I wanted to be able to graduate with a degree that I was proud of. So classes were always first. And if I was taking, you know, three 300 level classes or like a seminar or things like that, it would mean I would have, have to have a lot more energy going to those classes, right? Because, you know, if you've got 50 pages of reading to do for in two days, that means that you need to go and do that reading and spend time on it. Um, what that also meant is that in the semesters where I might have, you know, been able to get through a tougher semester and then have a little bit more free time, it meant I could focus a lot more on my extracurriculars. You know, I was part of a Greek organization for a long time. And in one of the semesters where I had taken classes that were a little bit less challenging, like a little bit less work intensive, it meant I was able to dedicate a lot more time to that organization and take on a leadership role. In the same way that this year, I've been able to focus a lot more on thesis and then also uh, go into doing a lot more writing, which is really awesome. So I think don't trust that don't believe it if people are like oh you've been through high school like the tough part's over like i think hamilton is a school that or hamilton is an academically challenging school um and at the same time i've never felt overburdened with my work i've always felt like i've been able to get the most out of my classes and engage in extracurriculars in a way that feels really exciting so yeah. yeah, I definitely think Hamilton prioritizes not only academics, but being kind of a whole person and being able to do your extracurriculars. Um, so I've definitely enjoyed that as well, even just with the schedule of the day with classes more focused in the mornings and then extracurriculars mm -hmm. and sports and things in the evenings. Right. Yeah, right. awesome. Um, so our next question, whoever feels like they would like to answer this one. Um, so what is it like for students of color on campus and how is the campus supporting students of color, especially in light of the protests last summer and more recently, the acts against Asians and Asian Americans? Yeah, so I can, I can start off to talk about that. In terms of like how I feel supported as a person of color on campus, I know that for me personally, one of the most magical places for me was the DMC. Uh, the DMC is the Dave Masolo Center. Um, another house is the AOCC, the Afro Latin Cultural Center. Both of those places are like um, respectively my second and third homes. Um, mm -hmm. I absolutely love those places because um, I think in Hamilton, uh, Hamilton is a great school with great resources, but sometimes it can feel a little isolating being a person of color on campus because um, it's a big change from the city, at least where I grew up from New York City, I grew up in the South Bronx. So it was a big shift for me personally. Um, with that being said, I know that Hamilton has all these great resources that are particularly helpful. In terms of the ALCC, I've talked about uh, cultural groups before, La Vanguardia was like my, one of the best places where I think I found the big strong sense of community. Um, in the AOCC, there was this big focus on like food and kind of coming together in a form of culture where it was just like, I can get connected to my fellow POC students and we can kind of connect and reminisce about mm -hmm. things that we kind of miss from home, different foods, different cultures. It just truly is a really great thing. And that likewise followed in the DMC, um, kind of the DMC being able to host these events. And the DMC actually has funding specifically meant um, for like these kinds of events. So for example, La Vanguardia and uh, BLSU, the Black and Latinx Student Union, tend to hold Cafe Con Leche, which is this annual event where we would have normally had students perform like poetry or like a form of art. Um, and we have cafe and like opus cookies, which mm. opus 12 out of 10 would recommend uh, the peanut butter cookies. I save it every year for it because I take about 10 and then I take another two and put it in my pocket. But moral of the story, I really feel that at least in Hamilton, that there's a lot of resources for us to feel connected with one another and kind of being able mm. to stick in solidarity, especially in these different times, um, like with these protests um, and like against uh, racism against our fellow Asian Americans POC. Um, I really think Hamilton gives us a lot of gears um, for learning not just how to uh, combat with it on a personal sense, like having um, the 
you know, great uh, counseling center, but also being able to provide resources on how to have these conversations and hold down these uncomfortable conversations that I think are very important to happen. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for your answer, Christian. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So our next question, I'm just going to take, um, so it's, the question is, what will life on campus look like for freshman students next year due to the pandemic? Um, so Hamilton does plan to be more or less back to normal by next fall. Um, but if there's health or safety reasons to do otherwise, they're ready to, you know, kind of pivot. And we've demonstrated that we can protect our community um, during the pandemic. A majority of students are back this year. 90% uh, about are on campus. Um, and so through that, um, we're kind of able to, you know, they're hoping for a pretty normal fall, um, but if not, we, they're really, really ready to kind of make adjustments as necessary as we kind of have this year. And we're fortunate to be kind of in an area that's a bit more rural, um, you know, where we can be outside a lot. I know that's definitely how I got through the fall semester and I'm so excited to be back out now that it's warm again um, outside. And we have been, you know, had the resources to be, to be tested regularly and things like that, which have been really, really helpful. Um, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so um, there are actually a bunch of questions about kind of Clinton and our location. Um, so, let's see, awesome. Um, so since we are in that rural location that I just kind of talked about, um, what are kind of some of things to do around here? How have people found, you know, if you maybe live a little bit further away, um, kind of getting to Hamilton, nearby am am airports, transportation, things like that. Um, so yeah, what's kind of everyone's experience with the town of Clinton? Um, yeah, I would say first of all, like Clinton is just like so precious. It's just such a cute mm -hmm. like little town. Um, I always describe it as like it reminding me of Stars Hollow from um, Gilmore Girls, but I don't know if I'm like too old. And that's just like that reference just like doesn't <laughs> like, you know, people don't get it anymore. Um, but yeah, it's, it's such a cute like little place. There are so many like great like small businesses in Clinton that you could go to. There are always like new ones opening. Like this past weekend, my friends and I actually we went to a new grilled cheese place that opened up uh, called The Compound. Mm. Um, and like it just had like different mm -hmm. types of like grilled cheeses. And it was just like such a cute like little um, like, you know, restaurant. And, um, you know, there's like the La Santa Maria, which is like the gelato place. And there's just like a lot of like really great small businesses. Um, we also just like usually like usually have like a fall fest where there's like the off the hill challenge. So you go to like Clinton um, and you get the sheet of paper. Um, and uh, it, it's like if you go and get the initials of like every store owner, then you get like a free shirt. And then like it's just like a really nice way um, to get to know like Clinton more. And like everyone's there and it's just like, you know, everyone's celebrating fall. And like, you know, you have food from like the cider mill which is also like a great, really big part of like living here. Um, everyone gets really excited about the cider mill. It's like a seasonal thing and they make fresh apple cider and like fresh baked goods. So yeah, I would say like Clinton is just so precious. It's like a really great town. Um, and I really like enjoyed it because I, I kind of came from like, I don't really come from a small town, so I never really had that. Uh, but it's why I really like just enjoyed like the closeness and like the tightness that I feel. I'm glad you also think it looks like Stars Hollow because that's how I describe it too, uh, especially mm -hmm. kind of the town green with like the gazebo and all the little stores and everything. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely great getting to go into town. You can even walk down the hill, um, especially when it's a nice day. That's something my friends and I really enjoy doing, kind of get like Utica coffee or anything else and kind of just sit on the grass and just kind of enjoy the weather. Um, but it's really great, especially in the fall with cider donuts and everything. Um, also just going on like kind of sunset drives and you know there's so many beautiful scenery scenic locations um, like Skyline Drive is my personal favorite to go right. for a nice mm -hmm. sunset drive. Um, I swear this, the sunsets are different up here so um, that's mm -hmm. definitely a really great play, part about Clinton. Um, yeah so and then public transportation um, there are Hamilton has shuttles um, that go to like Syracuse Airport I believe is the closest one um, and so you can kind of work with that for transportation. Also for breaks, I know they've had shuttles to, I think, New York City and Boston. Um, but yeah, yeah, that sounds right. And so DC, I think, is a new one. Another oh, really? one to DC in the past, yeah, past year, which is cool. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so mm -hmm. um, great options to kind of get from kind of a more 
you know, maybe busy location, or if you need to fly into Hamilton, um, able to get to our campus. Um, I know a lot of students, if they can't make a shuttle, will just really just meet the next, the closest Hamilton person and kind of share a ride down back to Clinton too. Um, I've definitely heard stories about that. So just look for the Hamilton sweatshirts. <laughs> yeah, the ride chair is great. Like, it's just like, usually the shuttles are like great and you can just like use them and they like send out a poll and try to gather like times from everyone and just try to come up with like a time that would work for like most people or like around the time that their flights are arriving but in case if you couldn't like just in case you forgot to fill out the shuttle request which has happened to me in the past and that's kind of embarrassing but you know it happens like it's tough um but <laughs> you can totally go on right chair and just put a request in that you're like coming from like Syracuse airport or like Albany and so we'll reach out to you and then you'll just like end up like finding so many people at the airport that are like Hamilton mm -hmm. students and it's a great time so yeah I wouldn't worry too much about that like I I live in Arizona now when I came here I was from I lived in Illinois so yeah I've kind of had a lot of experience mm -hmm. flying here but yeah it, it's it's all good I promise. <laughs> mm -hmm. Awesome yeah um so Christian would you mind kind of talking about what is orientation what does it look like here? Uh, the first year orientation? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. I can talk. Uh, can I, mm -hmm. are we allowed to, can I talk about the field trips, the first year orientation field trips or not? Yeah, not? Of course. Ooh, okay. Cool beans. Okay. So, uh, the first year orientation trips are super fun. I personally fell in love with them. Um, I think it is about 12 of us. It is 12, at least the year I did, I think it was 12 of us, 12 first years, and then two older upperclassmen who kind of take on this journey of, uh, kind of sequestering us and creating friendship is the best way I like to describe it. Um, I did something called curtain calls, which is basically where they grabbed 10 of us and we had the opportunity to do different like theater events. Um, I was with 10 very talented people. Uh, I, I, the most talented people I probably have met. Uh, Rebecca Fowler was one of them. I, I'm sure y'all know who Rebecca is because Rebecca's super cool. Um, amongst activities that we had to do that I truly loved, we went ice creaming at like, some, like we went around the different places of upstate New York to go find ice cream. Mm. Uh, we saw different theaters uh, and got tours of like the different theaters. Like I recall specifically, we went to a very old theater in Utica and we got a tour of like its history and it's super cool. Like they had this super cool architecture um, and we were just very obsessed. And I think honestly, like one of the more minute things that now as a senior, I kind of get to reflect upon. Uh, it is a tradition, actually, y'all can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I believe it is a tradition that we do not shower during our first year orientation trips. At least that is what I was told. And so like everyone like smelled terrible after like the third day and everyone in Wartimer ran to the showers when we got there. Cause we were like, it's been three days and everyone is kind of doing their own different trips. So for example, like I said, I did uh, curtain calls which involved me walking around eating food and doing tours of really cool theater places. Um, for others that also transcended to other things, like I believe some people were outdoors as well. Um, but honestly, I truly love mine. I made some great friends and some great upperclassmen and I instantly felt like a part of the community. I was already a HEOP student and so I already knew HEOP kids, but kind of during the first year orientation, it was just something super, super fun um, that I just truly wouldn't take back just because I feel like it's just such a unique experience. At least I feel personally, but that is just me fangirling for about two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah, so the orientation is really cool. So it is divided into kind of three main branches. So Christian, was that XA or OA? Oh, I do not remember. I, I know I wasn't outdoors. I know I was yeah. not outdoors. <laughs> so there's exploration adventures, which are kind of based more around like a theme. Um, there's outreach adventure, which are more, um, you know, kind of geared towards volunteering in local communities. I know my first year roommate um, did a kind of program where she was working with young refugee children. So that was one. She was more in like Utica, which is a lot closer. But I was, I did an outdoor advent, uh, Adirondack adventure. Um, nice. So I was canoeing um, and camping. So for those three days, so that's kind of where the no showering thing comes in as we were in the woods. Um, but it was right. a definitely a really cool, memorable experience where I honestly met some of my closest friends at Hamilton. And I think it really mm -hmm. helped me get to know so many people just kind of being in that kind of situation and also trying something a bit new. Um, I'd like canoed briefly before, but never for like a long stretch. And it was just a really cool way to kind of explore the Adirondacks and be in nature before kind of starting school. Hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so James, can you discuss kind of your transition from high school and home to now at a residential college and making that kind of work? 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I'm also still thinking about Christian thinking that he was only told that he couldn't shower <laughs> and that everyone everyone else uh, was. Anyway, uh, yes, so I, um, I'm originally from Boston. I am from uh, Rosendale, which is a neighborhood in the city of Boston, which I'm quite proud of. Um, so I, yeah, I grew up in a home there. I went to, I was, uh, went to a high school that was about 45 minutes away from me uh, by train every day. So that was kind of my, my sort of traditional experience, like getting food on the way home and like just being in a city with like lots of other people. Um, then I made uh, the transition to Hamilton, drove up once toward and was like, yep, cool. This looks good. And then uh, arrived on campus, you know, sooner than I realized. Um, and it was definitely a big shock at first. I think um, just the fact that I was, you know, there was a campus of about, I mean, 2,500 people, if you're including faculty and staff, maybe it's, that number is a little bit higher. Um, but it was definitely interesting. I, I was just out in, you know, the woods, like I walked out of South, my residence hall every day and just saw like, you can sort of see down the hill and just see like valley, like, or the valley and like mountains and things like that. And I was like, what is going on you know absolutely terrified and then thankfully i went on my orientation trip and they were like hey it's okay you're gonna be okay and i was like oh thank you <laughs> um it's like a little baby as i'm sure we all experienced um so yeah i don't know i i think like what's nice is that as a first year you come to campus a couple weeks earlier than everybody else um part in part to do that orientation trip um which is usually anywhere from like three to five days um again and that's when you're off campus not showering doing things like that um but then you come back and you have like another week to two weeks of programming on campus which is really really nice i think that's like a cool space where you're only surrounded by the other first year students and kind of and also like a handful of older students who are leading those trips and helping with orientation and things like that so it's like a it's a nice way to kind of ease you into that process of being you know around these people all the time and like just being at this college all the time where all of a sudden it used to just be you know a virtual tour and now all of a sudden it's a real thing um so that like transition it's like you almost think about it like an airlock like you enter one side of the airlock you have that two-week period and then you come out the other side like okay i don't know if i'm ready but i feel ready um and then of course you are ready and then you go and do good things so i think honestly orientation is wonderful for that it really helps ease you in and then you're just excited to meet new people um and like the upperclassmen when they come in so yeah that was my experience uh, at Hamilton. Yeah, orientation definitely was a great time to kind of make friends because you're not worried about other things. And I also mm -hmm. found just kind of funny, like all the breaks were kind of the amount of length where people would kind of just hang out and just chat right. instead of kind of going back to the room or doing something like that. So I found that I met so many cool people during those kind of initial week, week and a half, whatever it is of being on campus. So yeah, cool. Um, yeah, so Safa, would you mind kind of talk talking a little bit more about the kind of our career center and kind of career advising here at Hamilton. I know you're on one of our kind of pre-employment tracks. So if you touch on that too, that would also be awesome. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, the career center has been like really helpful for me. Uh, when I came into Hamilton, I was like, oh, I, I think I want to be pre-med and I like art. I like literature. Um, my like first semester schedule just had like a variety of classes and I'm so glad I, I did that and took advantage of the open curriculum then. Uh, but I had no one in my family who had ever like pursued a profession in the health, like a health profession. So I had no idea how the process went. So I just remember my freshman year, just like being really confused and just like going like straight to like the health advisor, um, like uh, pre-health advisor, I mean, and like her just like sitting down with me, just talking to me and like she just asking me about my interests and uh, kind of just handing me the sheet with like um, kind of like recommended courses that I should take and like kind of a tentative for your plan and that was just so helpful for me just because it like just gave me something to work with just because I, I had no idea what to do um, so I filled it out a little bit I went back to her I was still like yeah okay this is I guess how I could fit it but I still don't know what I should major in um, and then she's like oh I've seen that you've like mentioned that you want to take a lot of art classes what if you became an art major and that was I don't know why that like thought was so like profound to me like that idea like I like I obviously liked art I'd been doing art my whole life but I just never thought that I could um like you know be on like a pre-health track while pursuing another major I would just like I just didn't know about that at that point and she was just really helpful um and then James also me uh, mentioned uh Heather Wixon and she's also my career advisor as well yeah so let's I go <laughs> She's yeah, so on top of like pre like career, like pre-professional advising, you could also get like um 
so there's like she's the pre-health advisor there's like the pre like law advisor there are like for like those types of like kind of professional reps but there are also just like you also get assigned like um a personal career advisor which can like help you figure out like maybe what kind of like subjects you're interested in and like um I remember Heather Wixon had me take this like kind of like um little like questionnaire about like what things I'm interested in because I'm planning on taking like gap years before I apply to dental school and I've been like you know I've had some internships in marketing and like graphic design so I'm probably going to do that before I even like apply to dental school so it's just been really great like to have different resources as I'm like figuring it out people with different like knowledge that I could go to and how no one is trying to like put me into a box which is what I kind of like felt like in high school, you know, when I told people I like both art and science, they were like, oh, but like, they don't go together. But here it's like, mm -hmm. oh, that's really cool. You know, like, mm -hmm. tell me more about that. So it's just like such a different attitude and the career center is just so accommodating. And it has such great resources to help you like kind of network and like figure out maybe like how you should like apply to things. And just like for any questions that you have, like if you have a career a cover letter you need to write, you could go to them. Like if you need to get your resume, like check, interview prep, like everything. It's just so nice to be able to go to people and just like have resources. Um, so I would say it's been really like helpful in my whole process. Yeah, they definitely have great workshops that I know I've really relied on to kind of securing myself and my future post Hamilton, at least what I'm doing right after Hamilton. Um, and it's been a really great resource, especially that we're all assigned a career advisor. They all have Heather. I do not. Um, but oh. just having someone assigned to you right away is really, <laughs> really comfortable to meet with them too. Uh, and I think that's kind of a really great resource um, from Hamilton. So, all right, we're going to jump into something a little fun. So it's lightning round. So quick answers. Um, we'll do James Christian Safa and then I'll finish it. But okay, uh, the first one, uh, favorite space on campus, go. Uh, uh, Opus One. Christian, go. Uh, so, uh, uh, DMC, second floor, rainbow room. Okay, Safa. Uh, fireplace room under, like, the barn area. Nice. Right. Okay, I think mine is diner, um, especially, nice. particularly when the jukebox is playing. Important. Okay, um, next one. We'll go backwards, so I'll go first. And, Thank okay. you. So, um, favorite class. Um, environmental justice, law, and policy. Mm. Safa. <laughs> oh, this is so hard. Um, a class I took last semester called Organic Synthesis in Human Health, but it was it was not scary. It was like about research and like issues with research and how we can do better and educate people about science. But yeah, continue. Sorry. Awesome. <laughs> Christian, go. Uh, I'm sorry. I was lost in thought. I think uh, my current <laughs> course, I have a current course in women's and gender studies called Ageism. It focuses on okay. ageism and kind of like that new narrative. Super cool. Nice. Mm. James. Love this. Ah, why is this so stressful? Um, I intro uh, history of German film, history of German cinema. I think is what it was called. That was such a dope course. Like looking at anyway movies. Uh, two was um, um, intro to moral theory, which had like some of the coolest thought experiments I've ever had with Professor Plakius, who is just like so bomb and just got tenure, which she deserves. Yeah, cool. Okay, he mentioned two, so I'm gonna mention another word: art and feminism. But yeah, let's go. Okay. <laughs> Those sound like really cool classes. Um, one more. This one's a little bit harder, but. Hamilton bucket list thing you need to do before graduation. Um, Christian. Ooh, okay. I haven't climbed all the way up the wall in the gym. I really want to. I think Ooh, I can climb at this point. Nice. James. Uh oh God. Um, I want to, I don't know, Safa. Uh <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I just started going to the rock climbing wall this year. I should have went earlier, but I don't know. I just yeah, I don't know, but yeah, I mean, I'm not to just, I guess that was on my bucket list and I kind of did it, so I don't know. Yeah, I guess maybe go like ice skating again because I only went mm. once throughout my time here. Yeah, James. Okay, actually figure out what's on every floor of the science center. I'm not a STEM kid, physics is in the basement. I know that. Oh, uh, what? Floor? That's about it. That's physics is in the physics. basement. I don't, I'm trying to figure out what's in the science center. I also want to dip my toe, dip my toe in front of the pond in front of KTSI. I've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, mine, my roommates and I actually have this list going now because this is our last semester, which is very bittersweet. Um, but I think my favorite thing on there is that we want to make a music video um, going in like every location on campus, all of our like favorite spots. So I think mm. that'll be really fun. Um, oh, cool. So yeah, kind of going off of kind of the more, um, you know, like social answers. So 
what would you guys describe life on the weekends? Ooh. Yeah, James, you can go first. Oh, I can go first? Oh, thank you, Katie. Oh. You're so kind to me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I think, again, I like I said, I came from, Bo or I'm from Boston. So that was a big consideration for me. And when I was thinking about Hamilton, just like moving to the middle of nowhere, when I toured, I smelled manure that day. And I was like, oh God, what am I getting myself into? Uh, I'm just going to have no social life. And you know, obviously that wasn't the case. Um, I think something that's interesting for me is I actually joined Greek life um, when I first started at Hamilton um, and then have since sort of shifted away from it, which I think is really interesting. I, some of my best friends at Hamilton are involved in Greek life. There's like a ton of really good organizations on campus that are one doing really awesome philanthropic work and also just like having fun social events on the weekends. I mean, one that I love is like um, the frat that I was a part of, uh, Delta Phi, would always throw a function every year, which is where we just got all the student bands on campus. Yeah, yeah, you guys have been, right? That's cool. Well, yeah, yeah, I love it. it. Yes. Oh, thanks. I, I'm glad. Uh, I was just working it, like sitting outside collecting donations. So I don't know if it was fun or not, but love that. Um, no, it's a great time. You get all the student bands on campus to like come and do a performance. Uh, performance in the annex everyone's invited if you're over the age of 21 you can drink alcohol yes student bands St that's like one of the coolest things i've seen in mm -hmm. hamilton that i did not expect there's so many bands that just form and it's awesome like if you play an instrument or not or just sing or don't you can join a band i've known members of all talents in parts of organizations on campus um the best party I ever went to, for example, was a performance by the band Juice, um, who had a lot of my friends in it in the co-op. Um, absolutely one of my favorite nights on the hill ever. And a lot of social events are also, I think Greek life is one aspect of it, but it's also a smaller aspect on campus um, than you might find at a different school. What's also really cool is that um, clubs do a ton of events and programming on campus, just sort of on their own. So like I said, I'm a member of the Dual Observer, like a lot of the publications on campus, for example, will have parties with each other and like sort of have social events just to get to know each other. Um, so I'll go and like meet somebody who writes for Red Weather that I've never talked to before, but like is a sophomore and from like Baltimore and they're like whoa that's cool that's a real example but anyway uh so i think that the social life in hamilton is really awesome and obviously i there's always too many things to do which is really cool but if you end up coming and the function is still a thing the function should be one of the things you go to so. yeah there's definitely always lots to do and yes student bands are very active i actually live the suite next to me it's all one band oda shanty they're very good um Dude, they're so good they they're so good yeah, they, they, they actually did a thing over the weekend. Um, they just like played really loudly, like outside their windows and everyone kind of gathered on the grass behind our residence hall. Um, and it was the coolest thing ever. And just everyone's kind of eating dinner, like really distance, like maybe with their sweets and things. And it was just a really, really happy time. Um, and I think that there's always tons to do. And even during kind of the pandemic, people have figured out ways to be creative and still have fun and you know see people in a really creative way yes christian i was just gonna say like one cool thing that we figured out was actually a uh, queer student union when i was president we had this thing where we would watch rupaul's drag race on a weekly basis on fridays and mm -hmm. so to for covid we actually had classrooms and we put different classrooms um and socially distanced people to watch drag race together um and so mm -hmm. we had like this fun thing where like we all watched drag race together and we all kind of chatted through like a big group chat which i thought was a really cool way uh, to kind of get like the weekend started. And I think it's also pretty fun um, just in general. I feel like there are also a lot of like smaller events for students who aren't necessarily as interested in like going for like these super bigger ones. Uh, there's also super quieter ones. Last one, the uh, D&D &D one shot night, which is basically where you mm. play Dungeons and Dragons for one night. Um, mm. Super, super random, super niche. There's pizza, soda, <laughs> chips. Amazing. Oh. Literally the oh. best time I've had. Uh, but yes, that is just me throwing in my two cents on weekends. <laughs> mm. okay. Yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, so yeah, there's so many different, there's such a variety of things to always do on weekends, and there's so much happening on campus, which I think is a really lovely thing too, especially being a fully residential campus. Um, so yeah, kind of a question, I guess, for all of us. Um, so do we have any advice for incoming first year students? Um, you know, at just really anything. I can go first, um, and then whoever wants to kind of add on can go. I would say kind of my biggest advice, and I guess something I kind of wish that I had done, um, is I wish that I had really taken advantage of all the club opportunities at Hamilton, um, especially my first year. So basically at the beginning of each semester, there's a club fair where students come represent their organizations and you can find out a bit about them, but you can, you can sign up for them, but we kind of get emails about everything going on on campus, which I actually think is really great because it means that you're always welcome to join. And that's genuinely like 
tr really actually genuinely true. You are always welcome. Um, but I wish I had kind of, you know, gone to things that maybe some of my closer friends weren't really interested in and that I would have had to go to alone. Um, and I wish that I would have kind of done those things to kind of meet more people and really pursue kind of all of those interests. Um, but yeah, I think that's my one piece of advice is don't be shy and go to a club meeting. You never have to go back if you don't want to, but it's nice to try. Uh, if I could give a piece of advice, my advice would be to just make sure y'all, uh, reach out to your professors. I think professors love talking mm -hmm. to the students and I that's would, true. I would have started a little earlier. I have great connections mm -hmm. with my professors. Like I've mentioned before, the geoscience department is fairly small, but, uh, I think like students may have a bit more trepidation, especially in the beginning, but honestly, professors love talking to students about their research and about other things like sports. I had one professor that went to all the sports games. Um, so yeah, my advice would be to reach out to your professors because they also love the community here and they're also just a lovely piece of the community here. Mm, absolutely. I have one as well. Uh, so I, I just want I don't know, I guess like in my experience, like being a first gen student here on campus, I think there were a lot of times freshman year where I was just, just scared, you know, and like, oh my God, like, do I belong here? Like, I don't know, like maybe they made a mistake, something like that. And like having been here for a few years, having like worked pretty closely with the admissions officers who are like here now, if you got in here, you deserve to be here. And I think that's like, if you don't, if you can't say it to yourself, like, let me be the one to say it to you, you really deserve to be here. And I think that with that being said, whichever ways you want to push yourself, whether or not that's like taking a harder class or like a class that you might not feel um, like you're ready for necessarily, or taking, having some experience where, um, you know, you want to start a club or you don't see something happening on campus that you really want to see happening, push yourself to make it happen. Because I really do think that like, they do such a good job of like crafting community here and really making sure that people are going to be supported. So really just trust yourself or at least trust me, some random stranger who's a senior here and <laughs> saying that you really do deserve to be here and the experience is going to be absolutely incredible and it's gonna be what you make of it. So that's my thought. Oh, getting choked up. No. <laughs> yeah, I just wanna echo what everyone said. Like definitely with Christian, like go to office hours, you know, like professors love to see you. They love to talk to you what Katie said, like, try things, like, you know, try whatever you've always wanted to try, but we're not able to in high school because your schedule was too full and you were just like doing a bunch of things, you know, take like chances. Like um, I've literally went to club meetings at like towards the middle or like the end of the semester and you're still welcome. Like no one judges you. They're happy to see you there. And that is the general vibe. So try new things take advantage of the open curriculum take classes that like you don't think you're gonna major or minor in like you know just you never know like you I've had this happen to so many of my friends where they took a class just out on a whim and they just like found a new love of theirs so don't yeah. like limit yourself to that at all mm -hmm. and then also just please be patient with yourself mm -hmm. like it's a big transition you know freshman year can be a lot but there are people who everyone wants to help you on campus and there is a lot of support. So just reach out to people. If you're having a tough time, literally just like talk to people, talk to your mm -hmm. professors. Mm -hmm. You have a counseling center, go to the career center, like talk to mm -hmm. your friends. People want to help you. And you know, you're not alone sure. in your journey. Others are pro most likely feeling like how you're feeling. You're not alone. You're not the only one feeling like this. So that would be my like advice. No, that's awesome advice. Um... Yeah, so our second to last question, so we're gonna wrap up soon, um, but one more kind of serious one and we'll end with a kind of more fun one. Um, so mm -hmm. Christian, we'll start with you and yeah. then whoever wants to take it. But what made you realize that Hamilton was the right place mm -hmm. to be? Mm -hmm. So I, I, have, I, I have said this up and down. Um, I think one of the most, when, when I realized Hamilton was the place to be was when I was in my major, I was sitting in my geoscience classroom and I was next to uh, Juanita Gordon, who is uh, one of the mm -hmm. just amazing people in the world. I love her to pieces. And I was mm -hmm. learning geoscience from Professor Domac. And I was in a STEM field that I never knew. Um, and it was just truly amazing to feel connected, not just with like the material, but also my professor, my fellow classmates, everyone just into doing something all together and working for, you know, doing as best as we can, which I just truly love. So yeah, that is when I thought Hamilton was truly for me, when I found my community. Hmm. Oh. What that? Yeah, anyone else wanna jump in on that quickly? Um, oh. it's off oh. go for it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was reading the chat and got emotional, so I forgot what the question was. Oh. <laughs> so <just> <laughs> 
Oh, okay. Um, Wait. The, go ahead. Uh, no, go ahead. I, I still don't remember. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. It's fine. Um, oh, wait. Now it's making me wonder. No, when I knew Hamilton was right for me. Um, when I knew Hamilton oh, okay. was right for me, I, it, right, I, um, when I first visited, when I honestly made my college decision, it came down for me with to um, sort of the school that I wanted based and also based on financial aid. Like those were the two factors, how much I was going to pay for that degree and how much I valued that degree. When I thought about it all, Hamilton came out to be the right decision then. When it really turned out to be the right decision was when I was sitting in my intro physics class, absolutely terrified, not doing well, like struggling, in a, doing a problem set outside my officer's, my professor's hours at two in the morning. And she came out of her office, put her keys down and came over to help me. Um, and I just realized that even though this was a class, this was a field that I still, I mean, I still wasn't going to keep doing physics because of that. Loved Kristen, but that wasn't going to convince me. Um, I don't know. It's when I realized that there was something different here and like just the people I was surrounded by uh, in terms of professors and friends um, was something that was going to shape my life for the better. So. Yeah, okay, the people perfect. here definitely stood out to me, especially as I was kind of making my decision and just kind of the energy that I felt on campus in my interview, my tour, all those kinds of things. Um, so I think that really does make Hamilton really special. Um, so we're going to end with a really quick lightning round, a little bit more random. Um, so Safi, you can go first, but favorite residence hall. Oh, OK. Um, I guess I'll say Carnegie just because I have like a lot of great memories there. Yeah. James. Babbitt, hands down. Easy. Best storm. Christian. Hot take Dunham. I love the third floor. Okay. Hot I kind of, I know. I kind of love that. I love Dunham too. But actually, I think my favorite's also Babbitt, which surprised me because I didn't Let's actually go. live there. Um, yes. But that, it's a great, great energy. Awesome. Welcome. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately, that's all the time we have. But thank, thank you so much, everyone, for spending your time with us tonight. Um, we really hope that you've been able to learn a bit more about our community here at Hamilton, and we hope that you decide to call Hamilton home. Um, so mm -hmm. we know that we weren't able to get to every question. So if you do still have any questions remaining, please feel free to contact the admissions office at admission, uh, admission at hamilton.edu. Um, and there's also places where you can sign up for more virtual events and more Hamilton hangouts kind of similar to this. Um, and if you'd like to follow up with my fellow pa panelists and me, our contact information is actually on the Ask a Student page as well. Um, this was just our first Hamilton Hangout and there's many more. So the hamilton.edu slash explore page has all the information for the rest of those events that you can sign up for. But thank you everyone so much for coming. Congratulations to our accepted students and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your night. All right. mm -hmm. Thanks, Katie, for being a wonderful moderator. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> mm. oh.